Hi, I'm Maria Oliva with the Cape Cod Canal Region Chamber of Commerce, and we're here to do a lovely program today. But first, I want to remind you of some upcoming events. Don't forget we have concerts in the park beginning July 11th because the 4th is on July 4th. So we won't be having a concert that night, but check us out every Thursday night at Buzzers Bay Park from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Free concerts for the family. And don't forget about Cape Cod Canal Day on Saturday, September 21st. Mark that in your calendar as well. So I'm here with Harold Skelton from Fishing for the Mission 22. And we're going to talk about a nonprofit organization that's really important to the community. So good morning to you, Harold. Um, we appreciate you coming here today. And tell us a little bit about Fishing for the Mission 22, what it means, and how long have you been here in Buzzers Bay? Sure, Marie. Thank you for having me today. Sure. So I started fishing for the Mission 22 about two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. I moved here during COVID with my two beautiful children, Harry and Daisy, which you've met nice. plenty of times. Yes, I have. Um, so well, I struggled many years with uh, depression, anxiety, PTSD from my service uh, for multiple appointments to the Middle East. And where did you serve? What, what branch of... Uh, I was Air Force, Air Security Force? Forces. Okay, good for um, you. From 2006 to about 2012. Okay, nice. So I struggled many years in 2010. It's kind of the defining moment in my life where I tried to take my own life. Uh, I got medically retired after mm -hmm. uh, serving my country. It was something I didn't agree with at the time and kind of caused a lot of strife in my, my personal life and mm -hmm. my, my professional life. I was in the process of becoming a DE agent, working a task force with narco terrorism in my first couple semesters of my PhD. So when they medically retired me, that kind of put a big dent in my plans of my career. But look where you are now. Yes, but f unfortunately, that's not how I looked at it at the time. And, mm -hmm. you know, the pressure from everything, uh, really just the, the embarrassment of being medically retired amongst my peers and some of the things that were being said behind my back really just, I gave up. And luckily, I was found after taking a few bottles of pills. It was pretty well known back then if you went into... The med office, they would give you any pills you want, so I, want, I wanted the easy way out. Mm -hmm. It's kind of embarrassing, but I think it was part of the path that I needed. And I want to say after my suicide attempt, I got better, but I didn't. I spent 10 years in my basement. You know, I moved back to Hoyoke to be close to my parents. Um, as they get older, and, you know, I met a, a, uh, my wife from Ireland. We had a couple of uh, kids eventually, but I spent about nine years in my basement feeling sorry for myself. Um, in 2016, I was about to have my first kid, Harry. Uh, Harold Francis Skelton IV takes after uh, you know, our nice. legacy. And uh, right before he was born, I actually wanted to take my life again because of the pressure. And that was, thank God, the last time I had to be hospitalized. I don't look at mental health as an illness. I look at it as something that should be talked about. There's a lot of stigmas in, and I'm very open about my issues from the war. And since 2016, I really started taking my therapy and, and all the things that I needed to do correctly. So in 2019, or 2020, I, I believe, I became a single father of uh, Daisy and Harry, and I needed a change in my life. So at the beginning of 2021, uh, I moved to Buzzards Bay in the COVID with a seven-month-old and a three-year-old at the time and mm -hmm. decided to start a better life for us. I grew up in Western Mass, Hoyoke, a very impoverished city, the city that I love, the paper city, but between the crime rates, drugs, and all the other things going on, in one of the poorest communities in the nation, I decided that I wanted a little bit better for my children and moved here. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks for sharing your story with you. It's very personal, and I appreciate it. Um, as a veteran, tell us a little bit about Fishing for the Mission 22, what the title means, and how you help veterans with services and programs? Sure, so Fishing for the Mission 22 is an idea I had while I spent 10 years in my basement because I, I always wanted to help people. I come from a family that was very well known for helping. Um, my, my grandfather was the police chief, so I wanted him to always be proud. I lost him in 2001, right, when I was entering my law enforcement career mm -hmm. after college. So I really, when I moved here, I, I kind of moved here for two reasons, to give my kids a better life but also to give back to the veteran community and our nation's heroes and first responders. Mm -hmm. So I came up with the idea of Fishing for the Mission 22, and that uses therapeutic fishing to try to heal our nation's veterans and first responders um, through the therapeutic benefits of fishing. That's wonderful. Yeah, 
And over time we developed it. I wanted to go, I always like to take stuff to the next level as you can see. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, fishing's great. That helped me in my journey of healing. Mm -hmm. So I have my children, but what really is the baseline of what veterans need? And I'll give you an example is when combat fields such as ours, when you get out, there's no jobs that transition back into society. Mm -hmm. There's no job that wanted you carrying 150 pounds of gear in a Humvee or MRAP with, with machine guns. So it's hard for us to uh, transition. And we lose our identity when we get out for the most mm -hmm. part. There's no more camaraderie. No one understands us. A lot of us come back with serious mental issues mm -hmm. that aren't addressed. We're not allowed to talk about them because if you talk them around them and your peers, they'll call you names and mm -hmm. they'll belittle you. And it's, it's not right because mental health, if you have a broken leg, if you have a, a cold, you get to go to the doctors and you get better. So I don't understand why in society there's such stigma about that. So what I decided to do is take it to the next step farther and we created a program called Common Ground 22 Connect. Common Ground yeah. 22 Connect. And as I said, the camaraderie and getting these veterans and their nation's heroes back on teams. Yeah. So what we've noticed on these trips is we serve all our nation's heroes that you know, we have a, a way to sign up on our website, fishingforthemission22.org. If you come on our website, you can sign up and you can get a complimentary trip. doesn't matter like wh what your position a was. trip. Anything. Oh, that's wonderful. We do that in four states now, okay. Mass, New Hampshire, South Carolina, oh. and Wyoming. And we're about to add Virginia Beach and Florida. We're starting to scout out and have some pretty big backers down there. But anyways, anyone can go on those trips that served. You can sign up through that for our website. Mm -hmm. But I also said, what's the underlying reason why veterans are taking their lives because if you see our name title 22 there's an average of 22 veterans in our communities it's a public health crisis that 22 veterans a day plus it's not 22 anymore that's just our model that's our that's mm -hmm. our campaign but 22 veterans a day are taking their lives it's concerning mm -hmm. and it needs to stop so yeah. i look at really what changes people's lives so you need a job right mm -hmm. and, and you need mental health services without being embarrassed the va there's a lot of shortfalls that come with the bureaucracies is there. Mm -hmm. So over time, I put a, a, an amazing board together that have really helped us define what our whole purpose is. So explain that. How many people are on your board of directors? And you are a nonprofit. Yes. So you have um, officers that help run the organization. So how many board of directors do you have? We have nine board of directors. Nine? Okay. It's made up of everywhere, for every walk of life, from police chiefs to lawyers, nice. doctors at Tufts University, Dr. Terrell. Uh, he's been kind of my mentor, really, of expanding nice. our thoughts. And one of my best friends back home, Loren Lorenzi Healthcare, Ramon Lorenzi. I've known Ramon since, I think, middle school. We went to mm -hmm. high school. We went to college. Mm -hmm. We even started our first business together, HispanicLiving.com. Mm -hmm. And we always <laughs> wanted to have our own thing, and now we do because now he's helping me establish First Line Wellness Group, which is actually our medical behavioral services, which is all licensed. We just got our approval from IRS. We have our first mm -hmm. couple certifications for Blue Cross Blue Shield. We're getting Tufts. We're getting TRICARE and then the VA. So we'll be able to take all major uh, insurances that most military members and first responders have. And through there, we'll be able to offer licensed therapy to veterans, active duty, first responders, and their families. And when I say families, when I moved here as a single father, I found it very hard, almost 10 to 12 months way to get my son into help and I think that's kind of unsatisfactory. Yeah, yeah. We need more mental health services so yes. I decided to open our own with the help of Ramon really getting us off the ground with that and nice. we're projected to open that by the end of summer hopefully sooner mm -hmm. as most of our certifications have really come in a little bit quicker than we thought so um, most of those are going to be telehealth but we're also eventually going to offer those through our new resource center which mm -hmm. thank you again for having a wonderful ribbon cutting. That was one of the oh, best days of my life. Yeah, there was a yeah. wonderful ribbon cutting. I, ha I think there were well over 100 people oh, I think we had in the lawn that, yeah. of the chamber. And then yeah. we went to Mahoney's and there was a reception there. And it was a wonderful reception. And you organized a wonderful um, event. It was really nice. Yeah. Now you're right on Main Street, 47 Main Street, right across from the chamber. And I remember the first one of the first things you did, you came over to the chamber office and you wanted to know how much help we could give you to promote um, and uh, make sure that we let people know about all your services. So we really appreciate that. And your services are so important for veterans. Now, you, they can just walk in or call or come in, or how would they get a hold of you? Anyway, you can walk okay. in. We have walk-ins all day, which is awesome. Okay, very you good. You know, obviously opening up a resource center, you hope that it's going to be the productive 
uh, situation that you want. So we were averaging about 20 people a day that come in. 20 people a day, that's a lot. One of the cool things that we've done, we've teamed up with the Department of DAV Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And last, in the past two weeks, we offered veterans and the DAV rep, Alex, he's a, a rep that has a key to our, our shop. Mm -hmm. And in time, a veteran needs an increase or wants to put in for benefits. He will set that time. It's all volunteer. He's an amazing person, an amazing rep. But in the past two weeks, we helped 13 veterans not only increase their benefits, but put in for new, new claims. One of them, very close to my heart, is Bob Sloan. The VA actually did something with his paperwork, with the al new algorithms and AI, and they actually took his benefits. Unacceptable that Bob should have to go through this, because Bob was on, in the Navy during Vietnam and had an aggressive cancer from the ships he was on, and they gave him radiation that pretty much fried his nerves, and they haven't compensated him anywhere near as much mm -hmm. since the 70s. And we're pretty sure that not only did we get him his benefits back, we put him in for 22 additional claims, and he's going to get to 100% that he should have been recognized since the beginning because he's had lifelong disabilities and pain from the radiation treatment he received in the 70s. So this is critical services that you provide for veterans, along with the fishing trips and everything else, that someone can come in, maybe they're experiencing mental health problems, you can connect them with the right um, person to see. And uh, it's really remarkable what you do for the community. Um, it's, it's just incredible what, how you help people. And I think that you're the perfect person to be able to do that. How about events or programs coming up, something um, that, that you want people yeah. to know about what you've been doing? I, I think I'm just the face of this because I struggled, but I can't have all this without people like you, the community, and everyone that supports us, our stakeholders, our board of directors. So. I appreciate mm -hmm. that comment, but this is our, our, our thing in our, in our community. I love Buzzards Bay. Mm -hmm. I honestly picked this place because I've been coming here since a kid, and oh, I get nice. to not only have my business in Buzzards Bay, yeah. at 47 Main, right across from the road, yeah. but I also get to live in Buzzards Bay pretty much right on the canal, and I'm giving our kids a good life. And, but just to rehash some of our programs, we got Common Ground 22 Connect. Mm -hmm. That's a program that connects veterans for free fish and charters. You mm -hmm. can sign up through that for our website. When I, I didn't touch yet on the vocational, we have Operation Tackle 22. Mm -hmm. That's our vocational mentorship program where we've already put numerous veterans through captain school. We give them full scholarships. Really? When you mean captain school, explain that a little So bit. captain school, we actually send them on scholarship. We pay all of the books, the, the cards, everything that comes, the classroom instruction. Mm -hmm. So when they, when they graduate, they can actually get their United States Coast Guard's official federal license. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah, but you know, what we're trying to change people's lives, we're trying to reintegrate them. That's yes. a big word for us, reintegrate back into stable workforce. Mm -hmm. So getting them a captain's license is all good. But what we're also doing is we send them on, on we, part of the scholarship is we help them develop their logos through our marketing team. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, promo flyers. And if they're willing to invest in the clothing to really get their business, we will even design their clothing with them. So it's kind of a whole package. and. On top of that, not every veteran we understand wants to be in the Marines. So we've been working with a lot of local businesses mm -hmm. that we're going to be ramping up. And what that does is we're going to place them in jobs that might not necessarily be in the Marine. Because veterans need jobs. And it's, it's sometimes when you're sitting in a basement, you don't really. We're just trying to get them out of those basements. I spent 10 mm -hmm. years in my basement. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think I needed the 10 years. But I, when I look back, I don't like it because I could have been way farther ahead with this nonprofit mm -hmm. if I would have done this when I wanted. So that's Operation Tackle 22. It's pretty innovative. And then obviously we have First Line Wellness Group, which is starting. That's licensed behavioral services for veterans, active duty, uh, veterans and their families. And then currently, one of my first mentors here on the Cape is GW Customs Glenn. He's one of my best friends. Nice. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if you ever met Glenn. Yeah. But no, he, I haven't. But that's... He's been on the other side of charity, so he really took mm -hmm. me under his wing and really helped me, guide me to get me this started. But what we've been doing too is we got 10 veterans already in line and I'm very proud to say this because he builds some of the best custom rods in the country and oh, we got really? 10 veterans that he donates a little bit of all, all you know the components but the rest of it's you know we fund but we have 10 veterans right now that are getting custom rods for their service <gasps> wow. and oh so, my yeah. goodness that's a wonderful service yeah we've uh, we have only been talking about it for two years so I finally yeah. said I'm bringing five veterans down <laughs> so we finally got that rolling and our, our ultimate plan with that is we're going to start doing rod building classes where people that might not be veterans want to sponsor a vet. So with their mm -hmm. build, we get a veteran gets to build a rod. And we're going to take it a step further. I don't know if we're going to get it off this year, 
But as he's growing, he needs staff, and we're going to use our Operation Tackle 22. So how do you train staff, yeah. somebody to build a rod? I just bring him to Glenn, and he does the rest. Okay, okay. But that's one of our things about reintegration is getting people jobs and our mm -hmm. veterans jobs and or, or anyone in the you know falls under our criteria of first responders or ac active duty or mm -hmm. veterans, and we're going we're gonna to give them jobs with, with Glenn eventually, and he'll train them, and then basically they'll probably be – mostly in charge of wrapping and developing rods for um, all the rods that we're going to, you know, complimentary give for everyone's service. So. Wow, that's just incredible. Yeah. Well, we appreciate everything you do for the community. And tell us a little bit about the local business community. Without them, you, re you know, you need to raise funding and you can um, give a donation to your organization through your website? Yeah, you can give okay. uh, through fishingfordemission22.org. Yeah. Or you could just stop down in the office, um, see us, or mail to us at 47 Main Street. But I, I got to be honest, the, the local businesses and especially the chamber, yes. I, I love coming over and seeing you guys well, at least once a week. You guys are we so friendly. We love talking to you too. <laughs> yeah. I know, we, I know we have a little bit of a plan we'll be announcing soon to get back, hopefully in December, if we can get that rolling. But yeah. some of our biggest sponsors are on the Cape, Kingman Nat Center. Every yeah. local businesses from Mahoney's to Rod and Rail, to stomping grounds, to lobster trap, nice. to trading post. I don't want to miss any uh, Mezzaluda. I mean, every restaurant in Buzzards what Bay literally say. does our big chowder fest. Oh, wow. Which last That's year we awesome. raised $40,000 in five hours. So. That's unbelievable. Tell us yeah. a little bit about the chow chowder fest. Well, we're going to be doing our third annual. Mm -hmm. um, very successful. It usually sells out in a few weeks, which takes yeah. a lot of stress off us. Yeah. We have that at Stone Path Malt, which right. is... Mark St. Jean is like mm -hmm. one of my favorite people on the Cape Mark also. is the owner of yes, and Stone Path Malt in Wareham. A mentor and uh, I'm one of our main board of directors and someone I respect more than he'll ever know. Mm -hmm. He's done so much for me and my children. And You know, he saw me stressed out one day and he put his arm around me. He goes, don't worry, you're part of the Stone Path family. So he's very special to my nice. family along with nice. many other people. And but. this is a brewery and it's beautiful inside yeah. and they have... Great food and uh, oh, yeah. nice wine and beer. Yeah. <laughs> so another one, you know, I, I can't forget to mention Jeff Hopwood from Mako's Bait and Tackle and the Hopwood mm -hmm. family. Yes. They've been extremely generous to my nonprofit, as well as hosting our big Black Sea Bass tournament that we just raised another 40000 uh, wow. gross uh, this past couple weeks. So that Black Sea Bass has picked yes. up a lot of steam in, in our community. And, and you did that at Buzz's Bay Park. We did that right? this year. Yeah. Interesting. A um, lot of work. But yes. unfortunately, we, that Black Sea Bass falls on graduation weekend. And we still had the big crowd, but I think we had over 300 sign-ups. Mm -hmm. Oh, so nice. So a lot of people had graduation parties, which puts a damper on yeah. the party. But we had, yeah. I think, that 80s band played. That was awesome. And mm -hmm. cornhole by the usual baggers. But getting back to Chowder Fest, that's usually in February. We're going into our third annual. So right now we're looking for our music headline. Last year we did uh, an Elvis impersonation band. Mm -hmm. So br br brought in. Um, I'm always trying to look at you know what's what's the trends, and I think I'm about to close a deal with a Taylor Swift cover band that's going to come in. Oh, the cover band. For yeah, Taylor Swift? I got to wow. do it. My daughter sacrificed a lot. She was, <laughs> she's she's a, what I call Swifty. So I, I think. And I'm how a, old is your daughter? Daisy now is four, and Harry's oh, eight. Oh, she loves Taylor Taylor Swift. Oh yeah, she's wow. a Swifty. That's nice. Now, one of these days when I can afford a $1,500 ticket, we're going <laughs> to go. <laughs> so, no, and then, I, you know, our next big event is Operation Up in Smoke. We got mm -hmm. lucky and got certified with uh, Inclusive Barbecue to host a Kansas City barbecue-style pit masters competition, which we got 50 teams from across the country that will compete. Saturday's a big uh, festival. We're doing barbecue festival. We have a cornhole tournament. We got six bands. We have one of the main arm wrestling groups granite city arms he's mm -hmm. uh badger he's a five world champion or six world champion maybe now mm -hmm. um he was on the movie over the top so he's hosting a major arm wrestling contest oh, and we have fun. a bike run so it's like kind of like a one big weekend of fun and oh, wow. giving back to veterans up in the epping uh new hampshire region with the american legion post that's i'm actually a member so um i got hooked up with a guy named robert up there he's been great yeah, I think he's the vice chair up there, and we put, we're put we putting together a pretty cool event up there. So that money will be allocated to New Hampshire. And we also have a big presence. We just got done with Bike Week where we were vendors, and we're in the process of doing two major tournaments, one in Virginia Beach and one in Myrtle Beach with all black sea bass. And one of the unique things we did this year is we actually tagged 
22 fish to represent the 22 veterans we lost. So that's going to be something we're going to start doing in every major fishery as we, as we expand to the national level, because like I said, we're in four states. So we already, we did that with the Mass Division of Marine Fisheries. They came mm -hmm. on the boat with oh, Jeff really? and the, the Makos Division. family, oh, and we good. tagged fish. Oh, and wow. no one caught one, which I was hoping someone would at least catch <laughs> one, but we had 22 tagged fish that say fishing for the mission, oh. 22 on. So if anyone ever catches one of those fish, bring that tag to me and we'll give you some merchandise. Oh my God, that's yeah. so cool. So. Very nice, very nice. Well, this has been a learning experience for a lot of people who don't know who you are. We appreciate you really coming to Buzz's Bay. And the programs you have are phenomenal. And there's so many different types of programs that are available. So we want people to know who you are and what you do. So we appreciate you coming. Any thank last you. words of... Uh, I just want to you? thank the Chamber. I want to thank Born TV. Thank I especially want to thank my community for everything you've done. I moved here not knowing anyone, and I feel like I've been here my whole life. And I'll never forget what everyone's done and what Buzzards Bay has done for me. It's, it's well, changed you have my an life. important story to yeah. tell, Harold, and we really appreciate you coming. So don't, don't forget to check this out at 47 Main Street, Buzzards Bay, Fishing for a Mission 22, along with other organizations that help and support um, your organization. So we appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.